Hendrix is hurt, so I, I think that there's always a chance they can call Alzale up, but he hasn't been, I think, as impressive as they've wanted him to be. He started off the season this year and and basically had a cup of coffee just to kind of get back on his feet in Iowa. He struck out 46 batters in 32 innings. He's still given up home runs, and that's kind of the issue for him. But I think that I would say he would be more of an emergency start at this point for the Cubs. A couple of things would have to go wrong. And remember, Arnie, they still have you Darvish there that they have to pay. They've already moved on from Chatwood, and they still haven't called this kid up. So my guess is you'll see him this season. I still think in most leagues you can probably wait a few weeks or even a month before you pick him up. But there's no doubt we'll see him at the end of this season. I just can't say exactly what he's going to be. I know that other teams have scouted him in terms of trade, and they've fallen a little bit short. The only thing with him, Arnie, is that his his secondary stuff is is okay, but he's got to throw hard in order to succeed at the big league level, like 96, 97, 98 miles an hour. So uh, they do have one pitcher, I think, inevitably, that's going to be better than him and Marquez. But Alzale would be the kind of pitcher I think that you're going to see at some point, maybe after the deadline. Arnie, the other thing, too, the Cubs will go ahead and get a pitcher if they need it. So I think 2020 is when you see him make his 25 starts. I think this year, if you if you ask me how many starts you think he'll make between now and September or the end of October, I'd say five or six, somewhere along that. And can I ask one more question about sure. another player? I saw, I saw him pitch this weekend. I'm, I'm in North Carolina, and as you know, Judge and Stanton were rehabbing in Durham uh-huh. this weekend. Yep. I went and watched those guys miss everything, except you know, Stanton did hit one bomb. Otherwise, they were out of, their timing wasn't good, but it's getting better. Uh, right. But I watched Brendan McKay pitch for the Rays. That's where I'm going with this. And uh, they had opener even at Durham on Saturday. McKay came in, pitched five innings, struck out seven. He looked really, really good. And I guess my question is, what are we waiting for in Tampa for Brendan McKay? Because he yeah. looked really yeah. good. Saturday. Yeah, he, he, I, he, I think, has, has a greater opportunity there because of the organization that he pitches for. And, Arnie, you know that no matter what Tampa does, the acquisitions that they make, are not going to be big financial ones. My guess is that you will see McKay this year, and I think that I would add him in a lot of leagues. Now, obviously, the hitting is something that's going to have to be worked on here. I don't know that he's going to come up and be an Otani in terms of power, but there's no doubt that he has the pitching acumen to do it. I think in 15-team leagues or AL only, I'd pick him up now. Tampa Bay gets to the deadline, and we're talking about a month from now. They need a pitcher, and depending on the health of Glass now, it could be McKay. So I think I really appreciate Craig talking to me about Alzale and about McKay. And so what I did after finishing the conversation with Craig, I decided I'd do a little homework because for those of you who don't know, McKay is a double threat. And what I've been reading is they've been holding him down because they want to see his hitting, if you will, catch up with his pitching. And so it may be a little while before we see McKay, and that's what Craig was saying. It may be after the All-Star break, or it could be sooner. But I will say if you're a McKay fan, and I am one of those, okay, in his last five games hitting, here's what they do with him, okay? So he pitches, let's say, day one. Day two, he's off. Day three, four, and five, if that's what they do, then he hits, Okay, he DHs, and then the next game after the, the, the bat, he, he pitches again. So he has one day off out of five, you might say, and he's pitching one day and hitting three. Okay, so he's over his last five, he's, he's been struggling hitting this year, but over his last five games, since June the 6th, he's five for 16, three walks, two home runs, only struck out four times. He's hitting 313 since June 6th, which is markedly better than where McKay was prior to June 6th. So I'm sure Tampa is encouraged. So what will they do with him in Tampa? Well, he'll, he'll pitch, okay? He'll also hit. He's a left-handed bat with some power. So it'll be a unique situation. And if he's a starting pitcher, it could be something we've not seen in the American League in quite some time. You could actually have the starting pitcher hit for himself. Yeah. How interesting would that be? Um, So we'll see about that. Um, But certainly we'll keep our eyes on Brendan McKay, uh, Alzale, 
um, again, a player to watch. Mish and I disagree somewhat. I think Azale could be called up sooner, depending on injuries in Chicago. Okay, again, they want, as I said earlier, they want to see the kid pitch. I thought, and I still think, he may still come up this week. I don't know. It could just be a spot start, okay? So it could be like Mitch Keller in Pittsburgh. You know, he came up, he pitched, he didn't do well. They sit him back down. Keller's up again, pitching tonight. It's, it'll be very important to Keller's staying power in the major leagues if he pitches well tonight for Pittsburgh at home, okay? Alzelay could be in a similar situation. So those are two pitchers I want us to keep our eyes on going forward, Alzale and also Brendan McKay. And I love this, don't you? I love the fact that you've got these young kids, you know, they're producing. And so given the opportunity, how will they do? It is critical condition time for Keller tonight in Pittsburgh, in my opinion. I'm looking back at the chat room. Guess Clayton says I have to get rid of one of them. And the options are Calhoun, Willie Calhoun, Nomar Mazzara, or Aaron Hicks. I would say, in order, and I'm looking at upside, I want to keep Mazzara, I want to keep Calhoun, and therefore I would have to get rid of Aaron Hicks. Uh, Hicks is having a sort of a tough year. And here's the other thing. A lot of mouths to feed soon in that Yankee outfield, don't you think? You've got Stanton coming back tonight. Stanton's back. Okay, Stanton's back tonight batting fifth for the Yankees. And so you know he's going to play. And then later this week, possibly the weekend, if not certainly early next week, you've got a guy by the name of Aaron Judge coming back. He's going to play. Yeah, I know Aaron Hicks plays center field. I got that. But so does could Brett Gardner. He can fill in. I just don't think Hicks will get every day at bats going forward. So, guest Clayton, again, please go in, log in, and register, get a part of this uh, fantasy chat room. But I would take, I would keep Calhoun, I would keep Mazzara. The other thing is Pence is out on the IL. You know, it was a matter of time, wasn't it? We all knew that Pence would probably get hurt. He is hurt now. We have no idea how long the 35-year-old will be out. During that time, I look for Calhoun to get plenty of at-bats. And if he's hitting well, and I think maybe that also depends on Delano DeShields Jr., but if Calhoun hits, he's going to play. Mazzara's already playing. I like both of those better than Aaron Hicks. Okay, so let's move along. Let's talk about some players who were owned in, say, less than a third of the leagues, okay? And uh, I mentioned these players individually but as a group because if you have needs at the positions they play, these guys are certainly worthy of consideration adding to your team, all right? So Brian Reynolds for Pittsburgh. Uh, now, Brian Reynolds' batting average around 360. wow, uh, higher than every qualified hitter, though he's not yet qualified for the batting title. He has a 448 Babbitt, which is the highest among any batter with at least 100 played appearances. Now, he hasn't homered since May 26, so he's no Josh Bell, remember, but even though he's a rookie, these 51 games he have played, they, they can't go ignored, guys, okay? He's got a 47% hard hit rate. Um, now, he's probably going to hit around 290, 300 this year. Even if he regresses in the Babbitt like we expect him to, he's still going to be a product, productive contributor, and he has uh, more power and speed than uh, in the minor league, major leagues rather, with Pittsburgh than he had in AAA games. So Brian Reynolds for Pittsburgh, it appears he is starting, going to continue to play and get the opportunity. And you know I'm about opportunity on this show for fantasy. Brian Reynolds, if he's available, go get him. Jordan Lyles, he's pitched well and then he's gotten hurt and then he's pitched well again. Okay, so uh, 197 ERA through eight starts, you know, then the bad side. This is like Jekyll and Hyde. Do, you know, Dr. Dr. Jekyll was uh, 197 ERA through eight starts. Then Mr. Hyde showed up and he has given up 16 runs in four starts since then over 18 and two thirds innings. So if you picked up Lyles after this great start, you've been very disappointed. 
However, now that he's on the IL, he's going to start some rehab games. He had a successful bullpen over the weekend. Pittsburgh pitchers, they typically know how to pitch, okay? So, you know, he still, over the season, 66 strikeouts over 64 and a third. Maybe this injury gave him a chance to regroup. He certainly could be a top 50 starter, and he may be available in your league. Keep your eye on Jordan Lyles. He should be off the IL soon. Another player I really like, I've liked him, I drafted him, Ramon Laureano for Oakland. Owned in about 26% of fantasy leagues. His 2019 numbers are similar to Victor Robles. And I really still like Robles, even though he's off to a slow start. I think that those numbers will improve as the season goes on. Um, but going back to Ramon Laureano, he's... Uh, Hitting two, you know, he hit 234 through April, and then he got hot. He's on right now a path to a 2020 campaign. He's got 10 home runs, four in June, eight stolen bases. He's now up his average to 255. Okay, potential breakout season. He's going to play center field every day for the A's. And I really like Ramon Laureano if you have a need for an outfielder. Chris Taylor. You know, Corey Seager gets hurt. He's got a hamstring. We don't know exactly how long Corey Seager is going to be out. Projected four weeks or so. Taylor has started four of the Dodgers' last five games at shortstop. He's only hitting 218. Okay. But now he's going to get a chance to get every day at bats. He was not getting every day at bats before. He will now. He's only owned in about a quarter of the leagues. If Chris Taylor is available, plus he has multiple positional eligibility. He's certainly worth a look and a possible add. Merrill Kelly for Arizona pitching today. Okay, he has a two-week start this week. He has an 082 ERA in three June starts this year. Yes, 082. He's only had two walks in the last three outings, and he struck out 10 against the Mets on June 2nd. Okay, now this run, 082 over the last three starts, it's probably not going to be sustainable. But he is 30 years old. He's certainly worth an add this week. He has a 235 ERA against the two teams he's facing this week, the Rockies and the Giants. I really like Merrill Kelly this week, and he's pitching at home today against the Rockies. Now, here's one that I'm not so sold on, but the numbers are what they are. But I'm not big on the player. That's Ian Kennedy. Okay. Now, he has three of Kansas City's six saves going into June, right? The past two weeks, he's been the clear saves guy in Kansas City, recording five saves in the Royals' last 10 games. 34 years old, 38 strikeouts to five walks in 29 innings, okay? I'm not big on Kennedy, but if you have to have a closer, they're going to win some games in that division. Look at it. I mean, they're going to be playing the White Sox. We're playing the Tigers. Going to be playing, you know, Cleveland not having a great year. That division, that's games that can be won, even though I know we are talking about the Kansas City Royals. So I just say beware, proceed with caution. But Ian Kennedy, over the last few weeks, he's put up some really good numbers and has gotten a lot of saves for the Kansas City Royals. Sandy Alcantara for Miami. All right. He's not got a good walk to strikeout ratio, only 5.8%. All right. However, this is the guy that was traded for Marcel Azuna, you know. He has 17 strikeouts in his last 18 innings this month. 11.6 swinging strike rate, which matches Walker Bueller and Brandon Woodruff. Not bad company, right? So he's got a great slider. He's got swing and miss stuff. 11.6, as I said, swing and strike rate. Uh, will, Contreras, will Alcantara stick with the Marlins? I don't know, but he's got a good arm. He came up with the Cardinals, and he's worth keeping your eye on. Put him on your watch list in case somebody goes down. Now, we've got a question in the chat room. Jack Youngblood, how was that trip to Florida, my man? Let me know, okay? Uh, I haven't heard from you since you got back. I guess you got back. I, my concern was you were going to be in sunny Florida watching ball games and, you know, conveniently forget that you actually live in Maryland. Okay, anyway, 
Jack's going.